I just made this vacuum cabinet for my workshop. Since VAC was one of the loudest machines in my workshop, with its ear piercing and deafening noise, I'll try to place focus on how to make this cabinet to absorb as much noise and vibration as possible. In the first part, I'll be showing the building process and then I'll delve deeper into the noise reduction. Let's get started. Here's my cabinet design. All exterior panels are MDF because it has dense and uniform inner structure and it makes a good sound absorber. There will be holes on the side and on the floors to route vacuum hoses and electric cables. Doors will have to be opened like this. And I divided the inner space horizontally so that I could stake the vacuum cleaner on top of the dust bucket. I'll be layering more sound absorbing materials inside as we'll see later and details such as hole positions and door accessories will also be decided later. Underneath the MDF exterior, I designed a frame out of pine 2x4s. The lower compartment shown here is good for two bucket dust collector setup, but for now, I'll use the existing configuration, which has only one bucket and the cyclone attachment. Overall dimensions are 1508 high, 600 wide, and 455 depth, and it'll fit nicely in the corner of my workspace next to the IKEA straps. With the CAD, I was also able to compose a cutting plan. In Fusion, I just made a separate sketch like this. I'll need two 80mm thick MDF sheets and four 2x2s to build this project. Let's just briefly look at the building process. I used a circular saw to cut MDF sheets and I think it's practically the only way to do it in a small, non-professional workshop. With a basic circular saw, it takes a lot of time for preparing and aligning. I also cut 2x2s two two with a circular saw. Again, due to the small size of the shop, I couldn't afford a miter saw. For assembly, I used pocket hole joinery. Somehow, I always feel a big satisfaction using the pocket hole jig. And I guess I enjoy simple and manual repetition. That always works. These little things or bench dogs were so helpful. So please drill some MFT holes on your bench. If 
you haven't done so already. Now the frame is finished, but there was a problem. Every horizontal measurement of the frame were less than what they were designed for. It turned out that 2x2s I used were less than 36 mm in thickness, which is more than 2 mm thinner than what they should be. Although I'm aware that these numbers are not that accurate, but this was unexpected. So what can I do? I really should have measured all the materials before buying them. Anyway, after trimming the width of the panels, I screw them in the frame. For the floor, I cut out the corners and place them inside the frame. Now let's think about how to reduce the noise. On my VAC, the harsh high-pitched noise is mostly generated at the exhaust port. When a hose is attached at the end, it is smooth significantly as you see here. So I'll have to make some 3D printed attachment for this. Another aspect of noise reduction is the environment. The MDF walls are heavy and they are good at absorbing audio wave pretty well but they still resonate quite well, like you see here. I'll add layers of sound-absorbing materials inside the walls to mitigate this. The first material is this, the stone-embedded pad. It'll add even more weight to the walls to block a lot of sound wave. This pad is somewhat like linoleum flooring, but has stone flakes in it. I applied this pad only on the top compartment, because that's where the vac is going to be placed. On top of that, I use this material. This is advertised as soundproofing material for cars, and it's like some urethane foam with aluminum foil on the outside and sticky layer on the other. This is a light and soft material, and I think this will help to absorb some high frequency sound waves. So there's this soft padding for high pitched sounds and for the upper compartment there's stone embedded pad and MDF wall to absorb lower frequency vibration. This is basically how I'm going to route the airflow coming in from the bottom through the dust bucket 
and going out of the box through some holes in the upper compartment. I'll drill ports for air as well as for electric wires. And these are 3D printed adapters for holes and hoses. Holes were punched with jigsaw, and after that, the adapters were placed. There are two air exit ports on the top, and on the bottom, I added an air inlet and an extra hole for ventilation. On the left is a socket, which is connected to the power outlet on the back. There is another vent hole on the top. Here's how it looks from inside. I didn't link a hose from VAX exhaust to the cabinet because I think it might be better to disperse the air quickly. And this is the bottom cabinet. Air entrance is connected to the hoses like this. And later, I attached a hook to hang the hoses. So, let's look at the results. When the vac is outside of the cabinet, it's about 91 decibels. With the bent air exhaust, it's already about 2 decibels lower. And inside the cabinet with doors closed, it's now close to 71 decibels. With the dust bucket and hoses attached, it was slightly higher at 73 decibels. And in real life, it sounds quite smooth and muffed. So overall, I would say this cabinet absorbed around 17 to 20 decibels and I'm quite happy with the results. The cabinet also makes interior a bit warmer, but I don't think it's dangerous or anything. I'm so happy that I made this quality of life upgrade, which has been delayed forever. Thanks a lot for watching, and see you again in the next project. Bye!